Coach, want to start with the nickel position. Capenna and Jackson looked like they were competing pretty hard throughout fall camp. Uh, where do you kind of see that standing right now going into week one? <laughs> Kind of the same way I told you uh, back in spring. Uh, we'll know who the starter is <laughs> once play one of game one start. But, you know, those guys have been competing you know, um, every day, every week. But the beauty about it has been they've been doing it together. Um, you know, you catch both of them watching film together. You, Jackson, you know, has been here a little bit longer. Uh, he's always helping Penn. Um, but it, it's been a good, you know, healthy battle between those two. And, and I'm excited to see both of them go out and perform. Both of them will get, you know, a good amount of playing time. Uh, come game one. So, like I said, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see who the starter is once we both walk out there. Uh, I think probably pretty fair to say, um, you know, the safeties were pretty much uh, locked in coming into fall camp in terms of the stars with Sam and Jaden and their experience. Where have you maybe seen the depth develop under them with, with Dom, with Reese, with Boogie, and so on? Yep, I, I, absolutely. I mean, with, with Reese and Dom, you know, uh, again, you know, Reese, uh, a position change this 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 fall, and, and uh, with Dom coming to a new system, you know, they've grown every day, and, and their best football is ahead of them, but they have been just showing and, and giving, you know, uh, the defense coordinator and myself, you know, more and more confidence in being able to, you know, spell those other two. Um, so, you know, we feel good about our depth back there um, with those guys and, and, and don't feel like, you know, if they get in, it's a huge drop off. Obviously, we know, you know, Lockett and Hicks are very talented players, but, um, you know, feeling real good about those guys behind them. And then, you know, uh, Wilson, the young kid, is, is coming along every day. So, you know, as a coach, you, you feel really good about where we're at. Obviously, they're not in uh, your position group, but Brennan and RJ are entering their sixth year here, and that's just not something you see much uh, nowadays, especially guys of their caliber with NIL in the portal. What do you think their loyalty says to, you know, to the program and the culture that was built here? I, I think when you use the, the number six, it speaks for itself. Um, I mean, th those guys could have went anywhere in the country, right? You know, and, and how today's football is, uh, you know, again, they're kooks and they love being a kook. They show that they love their brothers. And I think that's just a testament, not so much to, to you know, the school in itself, but the players in itself and how they feel about each other, that they're willing to come back uh, for six year and help their brothers win a title. So, um, you know, again, I applaud those guys. And, and as a secondary coach, I really love those guys. Um, but, um, you know, their loyalty to this program and this, this, this community, this team, uh, coaches is, is just outstanding. How enjoyable from a personality standpoint has it been for you as a defensive coach to have them around both, you know, in their leadership and also with kind of their, their comedic relief at times? <laughs> Absolutely. Diff different styles, you know. <laughs> RJ, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see on TV one day. Um, you know, Brandon, you know, Brandon, Brandon, he'll hit you with something like you're like, huh? Okay, <laughs> but uh, no, they like I said, they they keep it they keep it light around here, and and I think like you know as a college athlete, things can get really really stressful, right? And then always it's, it's great to have some um, you know people that can keep it light and keep it fun, and, and that's what they do. And, and besides playing hard and giving everything they got to the program, uh, they they just help us in so many different ways. Looking at uh, Colorado State's offense, what are you seeing from them? What kinds of things are you kind of, you know, trusting to your guys on, on defense? A limit the big plays. I mean, um, you know, that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, you know, the offense they run is one of the most successful offenses ever in football. Um, you know, no matter where it's been. So, uh, you know, that's the thing. We're going to try to really limit the big plays. I mean, you know, you know, they have an explosive receiver that can that can stretch the field at any time, you know, uh, in the history uh, of, of their offense, even at other places, they've shown to be able to create a lot of big plays and change the field. So, you know, that's what we're stressing. Make them make them go the whole entire field, um, you know, when it comes. And, when, and the Cougs just can't beat the Cougs, right? So when it comes to, you know, coverage bust and things like that, we got to limit those mistakes and, and, and we feel pretty good about where we're at Millen their quarterback hit like 72 percent of his passes last year I think that was like an FPS record if not close to it from what you're able to tell on film like how are they pulling that off and then kind of getting that you know those passes you know, so efficiently um and, and I think it is a freshman freshman record for for the country that, that he did set you know when you have a percentage like that that is extremely extremely accurate um you know I, I think you know obviously you know he dealt with a lot of pressure last year um but he he, he takes calculated chances Right. And, and so when you're a quarterback that feels confident to sit in there and go through your go through your reads, which he does an excellent job at of really going through his progression. So, you know, I think that's why he's been able to, to do some of those things and, and being successful with the with the percentage. And, and, you know, he can run better than people give him credit for. Um, you know, he, he, he he's able to extend the play. And I think that allows him too to be able to have that that high percentage. I'm sure guys like Sam and Jaden get up for every game, but do you notice any more juice from them when they get a challenge like this? I don't know how that goes for you guys. No, you know, one thing we talk about in the room is being self-starters, right? You know, faceless opponents. 
And it doesn't matter the number. It doesn't matter the person. Um, we talk about, you know, being a self-starter, that it doesn't matter if it's the 85 Bears. It doesn't matter if it's the Little Giants. You know, it is one way to approach it. It is one way to go after it. And 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 we try to self-start ourselves because if you need somebody else to start you, uh, you're off to a bad start. So, you know, again, like we barely talk about names. We barely talk about numbers. We talk about schematics. Um, obviously, you know, you have to know where some of their players are because um, of some of the success they had. But again, you know, we don't want anything to, to add juice. Uh, you know, we talk about sauce in that room. So uh, th those guys are, like I said, it wouldn't matter if we're playing Little Giants or 85 Bears. So th they're going to be ready to go and up to play um, and I'm looking forward to it. Is there something fun or challenging about starting the season on the road? Coach um, on Monday talked about you prefer to be at home to start but is there something challenging in that you guys have to start that way? Uh, if I'm being selfish, you know, a long plane ride that I can get some sleep on. Uh, but, no, you, you know, again, you love to be at home in front of the fans. Our fans is awesome and, and start with those guys and, 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 and get in front of our student section. Um, you know, Half the, t half the teams in the country going to be 1-0, half the teams in the country going to be 0-1, right? And it, it's really like when we talk about faceless opponents and things like that, it's really just controlling the things you control, your effort and attitude, and that shouldn't depend on if you're playing, you know, in Colorado or if you're playing in Washington, right? So, um, you know, we, we try not – we know it's going to be loud. We know it's going to be a great atmosphere. So it, it's really just making sure that, you know, your communication is on point and that you, you know, you've, you've practiced the crowd noise. Uh, but like I said, we'd always love to play every game in front of Coug fans, but, you know, it don't work like that. How beneficial is this going to be for some of the younger guys who you can't really simulate a road crowd as much as you can, out, you know, out here in Martin Stadium? Uh, you, you know, unless you unless you're from Texas, from high school, you know, and 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 you you have some experience. I always tell them is it's going to be nothing like you ever experienced, right? You ain't going to be able to hear yourself think. The coach can't, you know, at practice can't be yelling at you to go move back two yards or anything like that, right? So, um, you know, it is it's, it's going to be good. It's just you know, controlled anxiety, controlled anxiety, right? Because it's going to be loud. You're going to be excited. Your blood's going to be pumping. And, and those are the things that we just talked about. Control the controllables. What's the next evolution? Picking back up his question with Sam and, and, and Jaden. Uh, to, to just, uh, we call it football 102. Right, you know, you know, Hicks is, is a young guy who you know is extremely, extremely athletic. Um, you know, so he made a lot of plays due to, to athleticism. Now, you know, what him and Sam have done is, is they've really focused on football 102. You know, really focusing on you know the overall schematics and, and how things that they can help and looks and things that we do and just taking it to the next step. So I, I think that's the evolution of them to just just being able to feed off each other and, and take some of the things that we do and make it their own. Um, you know, and, and when they make it their own, then it's, it becomes even harder to, you know, for the other team to decipher what it is that they're seeing.